In this video, I'm going to show you some advanced PowerShell debugging techniques that you can use. Uh, some of these techniques will work inside Visual Studio Code, and all of them should work inside a PowerShell console. Uh, in this demo, I'm using PowerShell or Windows PowerShell 5.1, but you could also use PowerShell 6 and 7 to accomplish the same thing. So inside Visual Studio Code, um, I have PowerShell extension installed and this scopes.ps1 script um, open. By default, you can run PowerShell scripts inside Visual Studio Code and set things like breakpoints on the left-hand side here. Um, if you use PowerShell uh, at all, you probably have experienced uh, debugging inside Visual Studio Code. So I've uh, set this breakpoint, I've hit the breakpoint um, after pressing F5 to run the script, and now I'm sitting on line 5. And uh, you can see here on the left-hand side that I have things like uh, variable information, uh, the current call stack, as well as any watch variables that I've configured. If I press F11, it'll step into this particular script. Um, and you can see now I'm on line 1 where it's defining the new scope function. Uh, you can also use these tools at the top right here to actually click and step over scripts to actually see um, or advance via your script. Um, and stop debugging if you'd like. So debugging in VS Code is pretty straightforward, but there's a lot of other cool ways that you can use the PowerShell debugger in um, to access things that you typically don't think you could debug. So first, let's look at uh, debugging directly in the PowerShell console. So the ISC and the uh, VS Code extension provide a lot of uh, useful features for debugging, but um, you can actually do debugging directly in uh, the PowerShell console. For example, if I wanted to just set a breakpoint, I can use set ps breakpoint. Um, I can provide a script file path. So I'm going to grab the uh, scopes.ps1 file here, copy that file path, um, paste that into this parameter, and set a breakpoint on line uh, 5. So now I have a breakpoint set. Um, this is the exact same thing that VS Code would be doing. Um, now, let's actually go ahead and let's launch that scopes file. And you can see that we've hit the breakpoint inside um, the PowerShell console. So unlike the uh, Visual Studio Code experience, um, you don't have quite the same um, visual uh, tooling that you have directly in the console. So some things that are kind of neat, though, is that you can do all the same things that you could do in um, PowerShell in the VS Code extension inside of the terminal here. So for example, you can use the S command to step into functions. And now you can see I'm on the same line, line 1, um, for this particular script. If I use L, it'll actually list out the script and show what line I'm currently sitting on. You can use K to do get ps um, call stack to see where in the call stack you are, and you can use things like get variable to see the um, current variables that are available in this scope. You then could step over with um, the V command and then quit debugging with the Q command. So those are all the same steps I took pretty much in uh, Visual Studio Code, but you can see I did that um, in the PowerShell terminal. So um, in addition to being able to debug in the terminal, there are also other like uh, types of execution that you can debug. For example, I have a uh, script here that uses a uh, start job. So start job actually uh, spins up a new PowerShell process to run the script that you are um, executing in the script block. So I just have um, a two line script block here. The first line uh, calls wait debugger. And what wait debugger does is it actually will stop this script and wait until the debugger is attached before continuing. So it's a good way to kind of debug things that you uh, typically wouldn't have control over. Um, by inserting this wait debugger command, it'll actually wait for the debugger to attach. So let's go ahead and grab this script. Um, this particular thing does not work in the VS Code extension, but it does work on, in the PowerShell console. So if I run um, job.ps1, you'll see that I have a background job running. If I run get job now, you'll notice that the background job is set to at breakpoint. Um, that is because it is waiting on that wait debugger command. So if I want to actually debug that job, what I can do is I can pipe that job over to um, debug job. Oops, debug job. 
So now you can see that it's actually stepped into that job and it's debugging that job. Uh, we're currently at line three and you can use all the same debugging commands I showed before to debug the script. As you can see here, this script only contains those two lines that are part of that script block and not the actual line um, one and four which contain the start job. So I can continue on in this script and it will complete that job. So now you can see I have that job is completed. So that's one way to debug background jobs. But there are additional things that you can debug in PowerShell. Um, one that's becoming more common is um, run spaces. So run spaces are a little more lightweight than PowerShell jobs because they start in the same process, but they uh, behave more like threads. So they run in a separate thread that isn't in the same place as your console. So it allows you to uh, you know, run many things at once um, for performance reasons uh, and that kind of thing. So there's a, a module called um, thread job that behaves very similar to um, it behaves very similar to just PowerShell jobs except it's using run spaces instead of separate PowerShell processes. So first of all, um, I'm going to actually start this thread job. This is another thing that won't work in VS Code um, the way that I'm doing it, but I'll show you later how to do it in VS Code. So if I run uh, this thread job script, it's you can see it's the same script except it's using start thread job with wait debugger. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to actually execute that. And you can see that I now have job three running, which is a thread job. So if I get job three, uh, you'll see that it is currently running. It is not at breakpoint like um, a regular PowerShell job. And what you'll notice is if you try to do debug job, what's going to happen is it's going to say method uh, is not implemented. So you can't actually use debug job to um, debug this thread job. But what you can use are the built-in um, run space commands. So if you use get run space, here you'll see that I actually have two run spaces. Run space one is the current console run space that I'm in. So um, when I just executed that get run space command, it executed that on run space one. But we also have um, run space 11 running. Run space 11 is in breakpoint, and that is the um, thread job run space. So what we can do to actually uh, step into that run space is use debug run space and it behaves very much like debug job. Um, this time I want to specify the run space ID. And now you can see that I've stepped into the run space. So uh, I'm sitting on line three. I can do similar things like list the script. You can see it's very similar to that start job that I showed earlier. It's just the two lines that are in the script block. Um, and I can do things like step and continue and quit. So let's continue that script. Um, I can hit control C to end that debugging session. And now you'll see that the um, job has completed because I allowed it to complete. So that's kind of how you uh, debug a background run space. So you would have a similar experience if you were debugging anything else that spun up background run spaces. Um, there are other projects that use background run spaces that um, in addition to being able to debug local run spaces, what you can actually do is debug any run space on the current machine. So one really cool thing is the ability to debug um, kind of locally remote PowerShell processes. So if I start a new terminal, uh, you can see this terminal is running um, on ID uh, 46,996. Um, and if I switch back to my other terminal, what we're going to do is we're going to actually run um, get ps host process info. So what this does is it actually lists all the um, PowerShell processes that are currently running on your machine. So uh, it's one way of kind of discovering who's hosting PowerShell and um, it's another way of actually accessing those PowerShell processes and invoking the debugger uh, directly into those processes. So for example, if I wanted to debug uh, my other terminal, so um, what I can do is let's start a script uh, so that we can debug something. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this loop script, which just loops over and over. And we're gonna run that inside our terminal with the ID three here. And you can see all it's doing is it's looping forever, uh, it's waiting a second, and then it's writing one, two, three out to the um, console. 
So if we go back to uh, the other PowerShell process, what we can use is the enter uh, PS host process um, commandlet, and we can specify the process ID. So that was the 46996 process. So now we are actually inside that other process. So this actually uses um, the PowerShell uh, remoting protocol over named pipes, and uh, we are attached to that remote process. So if I get get run space again, what you're gonna notice here is that I have two run spaces. Uh, run space one is the, the currently the run space that is printing out uh, that one, two, three over and over again. So this is run space one. And um, run space two, is the run space that you're seeing right here. So this actual remote host run space that was opened via the named pipe um, enter ps host process uh, execution. So now what I can do is I can use the same debugging command as I saw before to actually attach to that run space. So now I want to debug run space one and what you're going to see here is that I am now sitting in that loop.ps1 uh, uh, execution on the right host line. Um, you'll notice that this uh, console here has stopped printing out um, right host because um, the PowerShell debugger has broken in um, in this other console. So we can use all the similar debugging commands like L. You can see we're on line three right now. We can use commands like V to step to the next line. So now I'm back up on the while loop and V again to uh, start sleep. Um, I can always quit debugging and hit control C to uh, get out of that particular you know, debug session. Um, and that will allow the um, other process to continue. Or actually, it looks like it broke that. I hit control C, so it broke that um, execution. Um, and then if we want to go back to our current process, we can use exit PS host process to um, get back to our, our local process. So uh, that is an example of how to use um, the PowerShell command line to debug these remote processes. So I'll use this kind of technique if I need to access um, processes where VS Code might not be installed, that kind of thing. Um, but it's also possible to do some of these things directly in VS Code. So I'll clear this out so it's not so ugly. So to actually uh, do the um, remote run space and local run space debugging, what you need to do is create a launch.json file uh, for your PowerShell workspace. Um, this is the kind of the default one that you'll see. Uh, this is uh, launching the current file. So if you just hit F5 um, and launch the current file, that's what the configuration looks like there. If you want to attach to a different process, um, what you can do here is you can actually uh, define this particular configuration um, and it will attach to run space one. So for example, uh, if we go back to this process again and we start our loop script back up and on the left hand side here you can click the, uh, the run or debug uh, action pane item and in the drop down up here you're going to want to attach to uh, PowerShell host process. So we select that and we hit the run button or press F5. And now you can see it's popped uh, this selector at the top here. And this is calling get uh, PS host process info to provide us with the information here. So now if I actually select that process that's running the loop, we can see that it breaks into um, that particular process. What's nice about this is that you're now in the Visual Studio Code debugger. So you have things like uh, the variable window that shows you the current variables that are available. Um, you can step through using the you know familiar step commands instead of having to type those other ones um, and that kind of thing. So we'll disconnect from that and uh, see if we can go back. So some of these commands are a little flaky in VS Code but um, my fix for that is always to uh, kill the terminal and create a new one. So that's kind of how you connect to um, a remote process, but you can also do the same thing that we did with uh, PS Thread Job. So, for example, if I run this um, Thread Job directly in the VS Code PowerShell integrated terminal, oops, one second, we need to switch back to um, running the current file. So we'll do that. Um, 
So now we've executed this uh, script directly in the process that VS Code starts up. So you'll see that I have uh, this background run space that is currently in breakpoint, which is run space nine. If I hit this drop down here and say attach interactive session run space, uh, it's actually going to go look at these background run spaces that are directly in this process rather than a, another process. So I press F5 here, and you can see that run space 9, um, it lists as busy, but really it's in breakpoint. And if I uh, select that, you can see that it breaks into um, that background run space uh, that's using that was created by uh, start thread job. So now we are sitting in that background run space. We have the ability to look at our variables. We have the ability to step through the code um, and that kind of thing. So we'll just hit continue here and um, now uh, that'll allow the script to just go.